Dr. F. Perry Wilson is an associate professor of medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. He also wrote the upcoming book, How Medicine Works and When It Doesn't. So, Doctor, uh, thank you so much for joining us. So, listen, we know that China is trying to portray this as, as a plan that they had in the works, and the reason they're lifting some of these restrictions is because they say this is a milder variant. We know that's not true because they don't have the proper steps there waiting for these people as these factors are going to be lifted. They don't have the vaccines, and they don't have hospitals ready. How concerned are you about what we could end up seeing in the next few weeks in that country? Thanks, Bianca. I'm quite concerned. Uh, China as a country probably has the highest percentage of vulnerable people, by which I mean people who have not been previously infected by COVID or who have um, adequate immunization from a vaccine of any country in the world. And their first real exposure, their first real test um, after the initial wave uh, years ago is going to be this Omicron variant, which is highly contagious. Um, we don't have much line of sight in here. Uh, China is not tracking its cases reliably anymore. So the way this is going to manifest as in overwhelmed hospitals, and we know when that happens, people die that could have been saved. Especially the elderly. And given that they don't have immunity there and most people don't have effective vaccines, are you concerned that we could see a new, more lethal variant come up? Well, I'm concerned about new variants. Um, certainly every new infection is an opportunity for a new variant to emerge. That's just the random chance of genetics. Whether those variants will be you know, more or less virulent is really anyone's guess. Um, it could go either way, frankly. But the fact is any new variant is gonna challenge the existing immunity that, that is here right now. So it's, it's difficult to predict, but clearly we'd rather have less cases than more. Let's come back to, to the U.S. because New York officials are now urging people to start wearing masks up again since we've seen an uptick in cases and we're seeing a rise in flu cases as well and hospitals that are starting to get uh, uh, more busy and busier through this holiday season. Do you think that Americans and New Yorkers will start putting their masks on, though, after they haven't for so many months? Yeah, I, I think so. I think the framework, though, has to be one of individual protection. So I was rounding in the hospital today seeing patients, and I saw multiple COVID patients, multiple flu patients, even someone with something called metanumovirus, which is another respiratory infection that travels around this time of year. And I think as people see just how much virus there is out there this time of year, you know, when you're in a public place and you're surrounded by strangers, Throwing on a mask for you know 30 minutes while you go shopping is not too much to ask, just to protect yourself. Even if you're a healthy person, you know, being sick for a week or two with flu or COVID is not fun. No, it's not. But I have to tell you, just from watching people here in the city, I don't see many people walking around in masks yet. Now, that could change in the next few weeks. While we have you, let me ask you about another alarming development that we've seen, and that's the shortage of over-the-counter medications. And these are medications that are prescribed for fever reduction and pain, uh, typically given to children. We've seen an increase in, in COVID, flu, RSV. How alarming is that and what can parents do now? Yeah, so many kids are sick. I've got three of them. Um, they've, they've all had their share of respiratory illnesses this season. Um, I, parents need to know that, you know, fevers don't absolutely need to be treated. Um, you know, kids with fevers, provided they're over two months old, um, can be, if they're feeling okay and they're just staying home and hanging out and, you know, watching TV or doing some homework, that's fine. They don't absolutely need to be treated. Of course, talk to your doctor. Kids under two months old, 100% call your doctor if they have a fever. In the case where your kid is feeling pretty bad, yeah, you might have to call around to some stores before you can find that children's Tylenol, children's ibuprofen. Um, one more reminder, baby aspirin is not for babies. Uh, kids yeah. and adolescents should not be receiving aspirin for, for fever, aches and pains, or anything else because of the risk of something called RISE syndrome. So you do want to look for that Tylenol or ibuprofen, and, and you may have to call a few stores to find it if your kid needs it. All right. Some good advice as always. Uh, Dr. F. Perry Wilson, thank you.